Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Creepwood Baptist Church. I'm so, so glad that you are here and you're worshiping with us. I don't know of a better way to begin worship than with a baptism. So, Gabriel, would you come down here? If you're here and you're friends or family with Gabriel, if you've been Gabriel's Sunday school teacher, would you please stand? Gabriel, see all those people out there? That's your family. Those are your brothers and sisters in Christ, and they're all rooting for you today. All right? Does that sound good? All right, so Gabe, I'm going to move you right here. All right, Gabe, I have a question for you. Is it true that Jesus is the Lord of your life? Yes. All right, Gabriel. So by Gabriel, by your public profession of faith, I now baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, and risen to walk in newness of life with him. All right. Uh, that was our first baptism in this baptistry since the fire. And so we discovered that there are still things from the fire that we hadn't opened yet. And we just opened them. It was fun. All right. We had a lot of fun back there. Welcome to Creedwood Baptist Church. If I don't know you, my name is Ray. I'm the pastor here, and I would love a chance to get to know you. Uh, we are so glad that you're here. If you do us a favor, uh, in the pew rack in the card uh, in the pew rack in front of you there should be a card that says we're glad that you're here and we are we are so glad that you're here if you would fill that out and then after the service i am going to be back at the back left as you exit and what we affectionately call the pastor's corner i would love a chance to get to know you uh, and your family just a little bit wasn't that great just to see gabe baptized wasn't that just awesome uh, that was just amazing and i uh, just loved his story uh, and, and loved hearing about his love for the Lord, and he, he just does. He just loves the Lord. Y'all, um, we have an opportunity to make a global impact uh, coming up. Uh, we have Operation Christmas Child. As you can see, the boxes are uh, over here. We're going to hear a story a little while later in the service about uh, the impact that Operation Christmas Child has uh, around the world. And so I hope that you'll consider picking up a box and filling it out and, and giving it back up here uh, and bringing it back up here uh, and see what God may do with just a little Christmas gift uh, through Operation uh, Christmas Child. This week, we're going to have an impact on our neighborhood. Uh, we're having a coffee and donuts drive through this week. This is on Tuesday. Uh, begins at 6.30 a.m. And so if you want to help out, we need you here at 6. So I need all my morning people, okay? I need my morning people here ready to help out. And this, is, this becomes a great event because not only is it like promoting us uh, and caring for our community, but we also get a chance to pray for a lot of people in our community uh, through this event. So I hope that you will uh, stay for this. Immediately after the service today, we are going to have a called business meeting. I'll give us a short break in between uh, when the service ends and the called business meeting uh, begins. Uh, but we do, I do want you all to be aware uh, that we do have that right after the service today. Well, to all those who are weary and need rest. To all those who are lonely and need friends. To all those who are brokenhearted and need compassion. To all those who sin and need a savior, our church, we open wide our doors for you here today. Would you join me in prayer? Spend a few moments in praise and thanksgiving to God. We praise God for Gabe and has given his life for Christ. We praise God for what Christ has done in your life and remembering your baptism. Maybe you're here today and you're carrying around some heavy burdens or some sin that you are dealing with in your life. This is a chance to silently confess before God. The God who is faithful and just to forgive your sins. And the God who cares about you and asks you to cast your burdens upon him.
Now I'd like for y'all to pray that God would open more hearts to his gospel and that we'll see more baptisms to the power of the gospel. And now let us pray as our Lord has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'll be reading from Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth, Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Would you stand with us as we sing this morning? Seeing Gabriel baptized is a, is a reminder for all of us that we are raised to walk a new life, right? That in, in because of what Jesus has done for us, not just through his life and his death, but through his resurrection, that's what we celebrate every Sunday, a mini Easter celebration, that he is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen? And we're going to sing this song. It's called Glorious Day. It talks about the resurrection of Jesus and us being called out of our graves. I invite you to sing this with us. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight it was my tomb till I made I was breathing but not alive all my failures I tried to hide it was my tomb till I met you. Sing this with us. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. You called my Your mercy and now your mercy has saved my soul and now your freedom is all that I know
king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy of this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. They would take my place. They would bear my cross. You songs in our lives lived in response to the greatness of who you are, what you've done for us, and the reality that you are a risen king, Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace for us, God. We love you. Amen. Amen. My name is Edouard Ndiki, and I'm from Senegal. 95% of people where I grow up are not Christian. But from all of that population, God picked my dad to be a pastor. Growing up was not easy seeing your friends going to school. We have to stay at home because my parents didn't have money to send us at school. I was so upset because all my friends have everything they want. When I say, Dad, why we are not blessed like them. And he said, even if you don't eat, even if you don't have stuff, Edward, remember that you have God. I was involved in the group Good News Club. That Wednesday was amazing. We were coming to have fun, to laugh, to joke, to do all of that. And uh, we received a box. We opened it. In the side of the box was toothbrush. I didn't have to brush when I was growing up. We used charcoal and salt to brush our teeth. Having it for the first time was just a miracle. This is the wow. It was wrapped like this. I didn't know what is inside. Carefully, this is my yo-yo. This is my yo-yo. Every day, every night, with the neighborhood, we always play. Someone cares. God, he cares so much. He has to use someone somewhere around the world to pack my box. I came to United States because of my background, being a track athlete. I was involved in the church in my local town. And one time, I saw the boxes I received when I was 14. And I was so excited. I didn't have word. I was just like, what is, what is this? Where is this come from? Is reality here, people? Is you guys are doing this for real? And they say, yes. I say, I received one when I was 14. And everybody was so happy. Everybody was looking at me like, yes, you are in our church. Seeing God connecting me being 14 and coming to United States and to see the two elements just connected as a perfect picture, show me that I'm in the right spot. I'm in the right place serving the Lord. Daniel is my son. Daniel is the version of Edward in Senegal, but in the United States. Talking to him is the opportunity like my dad told me. No matter what you struggle with, remember, you have a God that loves you. Daniel packed box, and he liked to say also his dad received one. In the corner of this universe, you have a kid that is waiting for you to pack a box for them. It's not just a shoe box that you are packing. You are changing lives.
I'm back. <laughs> As you remember, we talked about October is the beginning of Pastor Appreciation Week, and we recognized Ray and Will that Sunday, but there's one more, and so Martha Minardi. So when I, come on up, because I have a little something for you. It's a gift card. Last time I said Ray and Will ought to take their spouses to, I have to do dinner. Ray Minardi, you know now, okay? She's got cash. <laughs> um, so when I thought about what would I say about you, and I couldn't come up with the right words, so I decided numbers would be the best way to talk about you. So does the number 5,257 mean anything to you? Not offhand. Okay, well, I got with Susan Nally, and we ciphered through how many Sunday school children have we had during your tenure, how many kids camps, how many vacation Bible schools. So the closest we could come with our ciphering was that you've touched the lives of 5,257 children here at Creevewood. It is a big number. It is a big number. I hope we appreciate you 12 months of the year, but this is just a small expression. Thank you so much, and thank you from 5,257 children. Thank you. While y'all are scooting over in the middle, oh, never mind. That's okay. <laughs> We've had a lot this morning. I need to tell our, well, who's B? Hi. I didn't know you came. I'm so glad. Okay, so uh, y'all listen to me, but I want everybody out there to listen to me right now. Okay, so, because um, I want to tell them something that next week, hopefully next week, got to clear it with Pastor Ray, we're going to sing our new song that we've been practicing. And they might want to bring a tissue because y'all sound like a band of angels when you sing this song. And so I'll tell Pastor Ray, I'll give him a little hint, it's the Lord's Prayer. And then, could you hear Mook this morning saying it? Uh, from Yeah, Mook's got that down. And so it's, uh, yeah, so we're going to sing the Lord's Prayer. It's a very quiet song. And then there's a part, and boys and girls, y'all know this, it says, hold my life, Lord, change my heart to forgive and love like you. Stay in light the way for others in all that I say and do. Do y'all remember that part? I know it is so sweet. Y'all are going to, it's just going to be beautiful. So we learn from the Bible Every week when y'all come to Sunday school or if you come on Wednesday nights, we learn from the Bible about Jesus and how much Jesus loves us. Do you know that there are people who don't know that Jesus loves them? Did y'all know that? So I want to ask you, what are some ways that you can tell others about the love of Jesus? How can you show them how Jesus loves? Yeah, Thwomp. Be nice. Was Jesus nice? Yes, he was. And you know what? Jesus was so nice that he loved people that weren't nice to him. He still loved them. Yeah. So we can love people maybe who aren't nice to us. Somebody over here. Did somebody, Vung, did you have your hand up? No. Okay. Anybody else? How can we love other people like Jesus? The am again. Okay, have friends, be friends to people. Yeah, Mook. Be nice. Yeah, what about sharing? Is sharing nice? Yeah, if you have a lot of things or if you have even a few things. Did Jesus share? 
Yes, he did. And people love that. So what about forgiving others? That's in our song, to forgive and love like you. Did Jesus forgive people who did wrong things to him? We can do that too. We can still love them. So there are a lot of ways. That's it, Mook. Don't give it all away. Yeah, so uh, next Sunday, when these people hear y'all sing, I think they're going to know a little bit more about what you're singing about. And that's going to be a great thing. So maybe they'll learn to love others like Jesus did too. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you that Jesus loves us. We thank you that Jesus came and showed us how to love others. Help us to love others like you love them and us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you have a Bible, I invite you to turn your Bibles to 2 Kings, uh, 2 Kings, excuse me, 2 Kings chapter 4, starting in verse 8, 2 Kings chapter 4, starting in verse 8, uh, let me welcome our Lyalshin, uh, Crevewood Baptist Church Lyalshin uh, uh, church to our worship service today. Welcome, y'all. I appreciate y'all being here, uh, seeing uh, Gabe baptized. Uh, they're going to be with us probably in a couple weeks as well, I think, and then we'll have International Sunday. Uh, so they'll be with us uh, for, for a few weeks here, and so we love it when y'all join us in worship, and I appreciate y'all being here. 
Uh, we're in Second uh, Kings chapter four. We're in a series called "Brave Ordinary Women and a Faithful God." Uh, Tim did a great job uh, for me last week. I was out uh, getting to honor my dad on his retirement. He'd been a senior pastor for 44 years, and uh, pretty cool. And uh, he's in Greece right now, enjoying retirement. Um, and I am here with you. It's cool. All right. Um, <laughs> Um, but uh, it's not often that you get to honor your mom and dad publicly uh, while they're still alive. And it was just a great honor to get to go and, and do that. We had a great trip down there. And I'm so grateful I live in Nashville. Um, uh, Houston is not my favorite place in the world. Um, all right. Um, Tim uh, filled in for me last week, did a great job, and then he texted me earlier this week and said, hey, I'm so glad you gave me Ruth and not this passage. Uh, um, but this, 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 this woman is a hero of mine. Uh, it's a Shunammite woman. And, uh, and, and so when we started to do the series, I thought, I have to do this woman. And so here we go. One day, Elisha, this is verse 8 of 2 Kings chapter 4. One day, Elisha went to Shunem. Uh, this is in northern Israel, uh, not, not far from where Jesus was born. A prominent woman, or some of your Bibles may say a great woman, uh, who lived there, persuaded him to eat some food. So whatever he passed by, he stopped over there to eat. She said to her husband, I, I know that the one who often passes by here is a holy man of God. Mount Carmel is about 15 miles from Shunem, and so whenever Elisha would make his trips, he would, he would stop through this town. So let's make a, a small walled-in upper room and put a bed and a table and a chair and a lamp for him there. Whenever he comes, he can stay there. And one day he came there and stopped upstairs at the upstairs room to lie down. And he ordered his attendant, Gehazi, call the Shunammite woman. So he called her and she stood before him. And he said to Gehazi, say to her, look, you've gone to all this trouble for us. What, what can we do for you? Can we speak on behalf of the, to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I'm living among my own people. So he asked her, then, then what should be done for her? Gehazi answered, well, she has no son, and her husband is old. Call her, Elisha said. So Gehazi called her, and she stood in the doorway. Elisha said, at this time next year, you'll have a son in your arms. He didn't, she didn't really ask for this. And she said, no, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your servant. The woman conceived and gave birth to a son at the same time following year, as Elisha had promised her. So the child grew, and one day he went out to his father uh, in the harvesters. Suddenly he complained to his father, my head, my head. His father told his servant, carry him to his mother. So he picked him up and took him to his mother. The child sat on her lap until noon and then died. She went up, laid him on the bed of the man of God. Shut him in and left. So she summoned her husband and said, Please send me one of the servants and one of the donkeys so I can hurry to the man of God and come back. But he said, Why go to him today? It's not a new moon or a Sabbath. And she replied, Now my Bible translates this, Everything is all right. Um, the word, that, it's only one word. It's the word peace. It's shalom. So she looks at her husband and says, Is everything all right? She just says, Peace! Which I just love. Just peace. Guy backed off. Then she sat on the donkey and said to her servant, Go fast, don't slow the pace for me unless I tell you. So she came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When the man of God saw her distance, he told his um, tenant Gehazi, Look, there's the Shumanite woman. Run to meet her and ask, Are you all right? Is your son all right? Is your, is your husband all right? Is your son all right? And she answered, Everything's all right. Again, same word, Shalom. Peace, shalom. When she got up, came to the man of God at the mountain, she clung to his feet. Gehazi came to push her away, but the man of God said, leave her alone. She's in severe anguish, and the Lord has hidden it from me, he hasn't told me. And then she said, did I ask my Lord for a son? Didn't I say, do not lie to me? Elijah well, said to Gehazi, tuck your mantle under your belt, take my staff with you and go. If you meet anyone, don't stop to greet them, and if a man greets you, don't answer them. And place my staff on the boy's face. The boy's mother said to Elisha, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I'm not leaving you. So he got up and followed her. 
Gehazi went ahead of them, placed the staff on the boy's face, but there's no sound or sign of life. So he went back to meet Elisha and told him the boy didn't wake up. When Elisha got to the house, he discovered the boy lying dead on his bed. So he went in, closed the door behind the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. Then he went up and, lay, and laid on the boy. He put mouth to mouth, eye to eye, hand to hand. While he bent over to over part of him, the boy's flesh became warm. Elisha got up, went to the house, paced back and forth. Then he went up and bent down over him. The boy sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. Sounds like one of my kids. Elisha said to Gehazi, call the Shumanite woman. He called her and she came. Elisha said, pick up your son. And she came, fell at his feet, bowed to the ground. And she picked up her son and left. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Uh, would you join me in prayer? Our God, open our eyes to see, open our ears to hear, open our hearts to receive a word from you. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and redeemer. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. When I read this story, I thought of a woman that I had heard of from this neighborhood. Her and her husband had decided to move here, bought a brand new house. And at the last second, they thought, we need to add a basement to this house. So they did. And when they moved in, Francis Parti said, God, I don't know why you want us here, but I give this house to your glory. Little did they know that two days later, <laughs> there'd be a knock at their door and saying, hey, we're starting a church here in Creve Hall, and we think that you have the perfect basement for it. And thus, Crevewood Baptist Church was born. Now, I know Francis a little bit, didn't know Gene. I would have loved to have known Gene, uh, just with all the stories that I've heard. Uh, about Jean, but I know Francis a little bit, and here's, Francis is quiet and unassuming, but she's always very classy, always, always dressed up, and she may be one of the most spiritual people I've ever met in my life. Like, I just feel calmer whenever I'm around Francis Partey. I'm sure she had the effect on her house, knowing Jean's stories. I was impressed with her. It made me think of another woman. There's a woman in my home church. Her name was Mary Jane Upton. And um, now when I knew her, I thought she was old. Come to find out she really wasn't that old. Um, she and her husband had retired early and had built their dream house and were planning on living in their dream house until they got old and died together. And Unfortunately, two weeks after they got the house done, he had a heart attack and died. And now here she is in her dream home all by herself, wondering, God, what do you want me to do? Well, our church was a big sponsor of the Lamar University Baptist Student Ministries, <laughs> the BSM. And they had done an incredible job of reaching international students uh, at Lamar University. So every week, Mary Jane would open her home to these international students. And pour in the life of God into them. Now, here's the thread that connects Mary Jane Upton and Francis Partee and the Shunammite woman. They all had a gift. A gift of discernment. Of what God wants in their lives. Now here's what give you a little context of what's happening here. This is northern Israel. Uh, the kingdom had been split in two, Ju Judah in the south, northern Israel in the north. And in northern Israel during this season, uh, they had had a, a rash of terrible kings. In fact, some of the, the kings is like, this is the worst king ever, okay? 
And they are on the brink of war with Assyria. In fact, one of the next stories in the next chapter is about the Syrian army commander who fell down with leprosy and Elisha ended up healing him. And, and here's what Israel's big mistake was. Here's what their kings would do. Now the kings, they're supposed to be full of wisdom. The kings are supposed to be looking out for the will of God, for the people of God. The kings are supposed to protect the people uh, in the land from the uh, outsiders. But here's what the kings would do, and here's what the people of Israel would do. They made the same mistake over and over again. All right? They look around. I go, oh man, Babylon's really flourishing right now. Their crops are amazing. Maybe we should bow down to their God just a little bit. Oh, oh, the Philistines over here, man. I know they're our enemies, but man, but but they had such a good year. Look at the their giants over there. That maybe we should bow down to their gods, and our warriors will look like their warriors. Right? It's like if Tennessee, this is, started looking down to Alabama at their success with the Sabanites. Oh, wait, they were conquered last night, weren't they? <laughs> that joke doesn't work anymore. Look at that. I thought I saw a lot of orange out there today. As a matter of fact, just for y'all. Yeah, yeah. I will say, I will say, that was brave. Uh, I will say that it takes an Oklahoma University quarterback to coach the Tennessee Volunteers. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> but what they would do, they would look around and say, who's being successful right now? Who's, who's, doing, who's doing well? And, and I'm going to take a little bit from that and a little bit from there. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that in. Yes, I'm going to worship Yahweh. And yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. But I'm also going to worship Baal, or I'm also going to worship Dagon. And over and over again, Israel would make the same mistakes. A couple years ago, I was invited at VBS to uh, come and talk to the fifth graders, fifth and sixth graders. And uh, I was really excited about it, and it was just going to be an open dialogue, question and answer time. And they asked some fantastic questions, some off-the-wall fantastic questions I was like, I finally asked, where are y'all getting these questions from? Oh, YouTube. And Google. Really? I'm, I get to teach college students. I love, I love teaching college students. They're amazing. And they, they ask me some off-the-wall questions sometimes. And I ask, where did you get that from? Oh, TikTok. Really? TikTok. With all the different information that is coming at us from Google, from Facebook, from TikTok, it's going to take people with discerning hearts and minds to figure out how to live well. By the way, it's not just Gen Z who's doing that. I was telling this story on Thursday to some of our people who are at, the more mature people who are at the, uh, at the uh, taco, not taco, the soup salad and scripture. I, get, I want tacos apparently, that's what I'm wanting right now. Um, and they, somebody looked at me and said, oh, well, I get most of my information off Facebook and Twitter too. So, you know, it's not just not just our younger ones. What's happening to us right now is, is that uh, social media and all these different influences, Google, YouTube, all those kind of things, they are, they are literally in fluctuating our minds and our, and our, and our, with information, and they're forming us in ways that we cannot even see. One of the gifts that the church has to cultivate is a sense of discernment of what is of God and what is not. Now, your Bibles here are going to say the Shunammite woman. So 
It was a great woman. Some of your Bibles are going to translate it as a wealthy woman. And that's, and that's a possibility. After all, she did add on a part to her house, and we know that that could be pretty expensive and did it pretty easily. Uh, some people will say, well, no, it's a person of importance in this area. And, and I would get that. Uh, uh, you know, maybe she owns some land. Maybe she comes from a prominent family. We don't know. Uh, we're not given her name. I think it's something else, though. I think she was a great woman. Because she had embraced God's wisdom. I think if you go and read Proverbs 31 and compare her to the Shudanite woman, you would see that these are one and the same. This is a woman who's embraced God's wisdom and discernment in life. And not only that, she was secure in who she was. She had provided hospitality. Now, in this world that uh, they're living on the edge of the Syrians coming in and people are looking everywhere for their information, uh, this woman decided and saw Elisha and said, now there's a man of God and I want him in my life. She made meals, she had conversations, she ended up adding a room to their house. When all the rest of the world was looking for success elsewhere, I recognized God's spirits upon this person. And then Elisha wants to reward her. He does. What, what can I do for you? Can I talk to the king for you? Can I talk to the commanders of the armies? I think he's talking about Naaman here. Uh, can I talk to somebody for you? At, to, but do you want more land? Do you, what does she say? I'm at home among my people. That's, that's a secure person. It's almost like she was saying, I'm at home in my own skin. I know who I am because I know whose I am. I am the Lord's. I've embraced it. I am made in God's image. I am loved by God. Elisha, because I'm loved by God, because I'm blessed by God, this is why I'm blessing you. I have no other agenda. I'm at home among my people. I want to live with generosity as God has taught me to live with generosity. I, I want to live with justice as God has taught us to live with justice. Well, I'm, I'm good. And then Gehazi, this servant of, he's kind of an apprentice to Elisha. And Elisha didn't always treat Gehazi very kindly, but Gehazi says, Well, I hear they don't have any kids. Then Elisha's like, You must have kids. My sense, though, from, from this is that this is something they had prayed for and longed for from a long time. Don't lie to me, Elisha. I've, I've put that part of my life away. Sure enough, got a son. So here, here's what I've noticed about this woman just so far, just so far. This is a woman who is discerning the will of God. This is a woman who's at home in her own skin. Sometimes we call those non-anxious presence in our world today. So we have a woman who's discerning and a woman who's non-anxious. And now the gut punch comes. She gets the son. And you know she cared for him. She's raised him. Even him working him a little bit, right? He's out in the harvest field with the fathers. And all of a sudden, my head, my head. No, we're not told what happened. I don't know if it's dehydration. I don't know if he had a brain aneurysm. I, I don't know. Just something happened in his head. Um, father brings him into the mom, and the mom holds him until he dies. And then what's interesting, she brings him up, she puts him where? In Elisha's room. 
I get the sense she didn't tell her husband that her son had died. And then all of a sudden, I got to go see Elisha. Why? It's not, it's not like a religious day. It's just a regular Tuesday. What, what do you need to go? I got to go. And she just said the word peace. Peace. Now, now part of that may be just, hey, get off my back. Uh, y'all remember the show King of Queens? Uh, Kevin James had this line in there that he used called wife away. where He would just say yes to everything. Maybe that was it. Maybe it was just like a husband away, like peace. I don't know. I, I kind of think it's something more here. I, I, I think for her in this moment, it's like this woman is a person of peace. And it's going to work out. It's going to be okay. This woman had this great hope. She makes it the 15 miles up to Mount Carmel. Met by Gehazi. Is everything all right? Is everything? And, and the, he repeats the word peace like four times in there. Is your husband peace? Is he shalom? Is her son shalom? She just said, shalom, peace again. Finally gets to Elisha. And that's where she breaks down. Didn't you? Did I ask for this? <laughs> did you give me this? You gave me this boy, now he's died? Wow. Elijah, obviously concerned, sends his servant Gehazi. And the woman says, I'm not leaving you. In other words, Gehazi's not good enough. You're the one that needs to go. It's almost like the doctor sends in the nurse practitioner and the mom said, no. I need, I need the big dog. I need the doctor to come. I need Elisha to come. Elisha comes. Gehazi has no, no thing. And then what's interesting is Elisha, and if you read Elisha very closely, he doesn't get close to people. He doesn't hug people. He's not real affectionate. Uh, one time he had some kids who were making fun of him because he was bald, and he sent a bear to attack them. That's Will Sensing's favorite birth, the verse, you know, just kind of. Uh, he's not here, I could do that. Um, but here, Elisha gets mouth to mouth, eye to eye. Bibles don't translate it this way, but it's heart to heart. And the boy wakes up. Now, part of this, this section comes in a section of miracles that confirm Elisha as Elijah's uh, follower, as the one who was given the, the anointment from Elijah. And so part of this is, is maybe the, Elijah's the hero in the story, but I don't think so. I, to me, it's the Shunammite woman. A Shunammite woman who is discerning, and not anxious. And eventually she brought life. Maybe say it like this. What we need in our world. What God needs in our world today. Are people who are discerning. And not anxious. Because those people are the ones that bring life. Think about the anxiety that our world lives in right now. I read the other day that post-pandemic, 60% of adults admit to struggling with being anxious. Our mental health crisis have gone up and up and up and up. You look at the way that our politics are run. Mean, I'm not making a political statement here, but usually our politics are run by who? The most anxious people in the room, aren't they? We live in a culture that is full of anxious presences all around us. And you know what that's doing? That's bringing chaos into the world. Bringing chaos into our lives. What we need, what we need 
We need people who are discerning, non-anxious presence. Because those people bring life. What I mean by discerning? What I don't mean is judging. Judging is usually the negative connotation of discerning. Now what, I, what I do mean is people who are able to see the big picture. What's right and what's wrong. And the most discerning people become the most loving people. The most discerning people become the most loving people. I, I, I didn't come up with these questions. Andy Stanley came up with these questions. But these are really good questions to ask uh, when you're discerning something with God. When you got something that's kind of hard that's come your way. You ask yourself, in two years, and five years, when this is just a story... What kind of story would I want to tell? Another question, another great question. What would love require me to do? What would love require me to do? Ask those two questions. You, you start facing the different events in your life. You start asking those two questions. You ask those not only to yourself, but you ask those to God in prayer. You become more of what? A discerning person. A non-anxious person. When I think of this, I think of my grandma Frances. Uh, it's amazing that I'm bookending these with two Francises. My grandma Frances grew up the daughter of a, of a World War I veteran. He would go and... Um, he was a cotton farmer, and they would get their crop for the year. And they'd set his daughters, he had four daughters, in a movie, and he would go and gamble away all their winnings for the year. She grew up in abject poverty and abuse. But you would never know that when you met my grandmother at 70. <laughs> so my grandmother at 70 was probably the most secure, loving person I've ever met in my life. What happened there? Jesus. Probably some therapy, but Jesus. Every day, I got to spend some time with her before she died, and every day there was a little rocking chair next to her bed. And beside that, I have this table now, was a little table built by my great-grandfather Ray, and he... And she had her Bible and her prayer list. And every day she would roll out of bed, and the first thing she would do was get on her knees. And she would spend the first 30 minutes of the day in prayer, walking through her day with God. And over time, day after day, month after month, year after year, you know what happened to her anxiety? You know what happened to that stuff that... Uh, that she had to deal with as a child doesn't always go away, but you know what it does? It goes down. Now, y'all, we're not going to be able to raise the dead. <laughs> those, those things, uh, it's, that's up to God. But what we can be, what we can be is discerning and not anxious in a world that is coming at us and pulling us every which way and that is anxious and chaotic. In our churches, we, we've got to teach this now. I think the greatest gift that our churches can bring to the world is to be full of people who are joyful and non-anxious because we know that in the end, Jesus is going to make everything right.
But until then, we can discern and we can walk with God. So will you walk with God this week? Let's pray. Here in a moment, we're going to sing a hymn of response. And maybe you've never received Jesus as Lord, and you don't know what that's like. We would love to invite you to respond to that. Maybe you've never uh, been baptized like Gabe was earlier today, and, and so we invite you to uh, take that next step on your journey uh, in baptism. Maybe some of y'all need to join our church, and uh, we invite you to do that. Maybe some of y'all are here, and you're struggling. You're struggling with anxiety. Or you're struggling with uh, different things. Uh, if that's you, and you'd like somebody to pray for you, would you just look at me right now? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. We're going to enter God's presence in prayer right now. God, I, 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 I lift up my brothers and sisters in Christ right now. I know you tell us to be anxious for nothing, but that is such a hard thing to do when we're disconnected from you. And so, God, I pray that you come alongside us in our anxiety, in our, in our worry, and in, in our different things that's pulling us in our way and our burdens, that, God, that you would give us peace. Shalom. I pray, God, that as we walk together out of this place, that you'd help us to better learn how to discern. That you'd help us to be non-anxious presence in an anxious world. Because those people give life. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Whatever it is you need to respond, I pray that you do so as we stand and as we sing. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as died my soul to save my lips shall still repeat Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he was the word new baby 
leave my dead and raise this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the word, pay my dead and raise this life up. Amen. I hope that you've been blessed today. Gabriel, would you come see me one more time? Just one more time. Just come see me. I know, you're a little nervous. I have something to give to you to help you remember today. This is your certificate of baptism uh, that says that you have been baptized today on October the 16th, 2022 at Crevewood Baptist Church to help you remember this day for the rest of your life. All right. We love you. All those people are rooting for you. Now, I'm not going to make you stand down here and shake everybody's hand again, okay? But you can go back to your seat. But uh, we, we, we love you, buddy. All right. Thank you, Laotian Church, for being with us today. We've loved having you here. I hope you all were blessed. Uh, please allow us to, uh, let me bless you and we'll be dismissed. Remember, uh, call business meeting in here. I'll give about seven minutes, seven-ish minutes Maybe 10, 7 to 10 minutes, somewhere in there uh, between, uh, between time. All right, let me bless you all. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.